Welcome. It's May 4th. May the 4th be with you for all you fans out there that know what we're talking about. Uh, it's also Cinco de Mayo weekend, so great for that. Uh, we are doing some comfort food today instead of Mexican. Welcome to Eat, Taste, Live Live. I'm Chef Andrew Doyle. We are going to get cooking because we've got a lot of great food today. Let's get back into the kitchen. Howdy. Um, we've got a meatloaf, which uh, we do with three meats just for flavor. We do a ground beef and a kind of sausage. Uh, we also uh, add a little bit of chopped bacon in with that with that meatloaf. Might as well. I mean, bacon makes it better, right? It, it does. Makes All right. <laughs> so we're going to do that. Um, and then we're going to go into some grilled cheese. We're doing comfort foods. Um, when people uh, with celiac disease um, get diagnosed, there's a lot of things taken out of their diets. They're like, oh my God, I can't eat this. What can I eat? What's going on? Um, and a lot of that's the comfort foods, things with breads, pastas, uh, anything like that. So that's why we're going to do the meatloaf. So I had to do that without um, breadcrumbs and, you know, keep everything together. Uh, the grilled cheese, we're using a brown rice, uh, wheat-free, gluten-free bread. Um, and then we just got a bunch of other happy, fun stuff. You can't do grilled cheese without tomato soup. So we're going to do a quick and easy tomato soup. Um, it's unbelievable how easy this is. It's like five minutes, like and, and then it. you get it hot. Yeah, you could totally <laughs> do it. Uh, in studio today, we've got our guest uh, Stephanie Thorpe and Joel Bryant. Yay, um, Stephanie Thorpe. Stephanie, is, it's great to have Stephanie here. Joel just kind of keeps showing up each week. We're not sure. I haven't left, to be honest with you, so we got to discuss rent and utilities. That's what that was on the couch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I apologize for I that. I eat your meals, and then I fall asleep for like three days, and then I wake <laughs> up, and it's just awkward. Excellent. You snore, by the way. I, I know. <laughs> I caught myself once. Never. Anyways. All right. So we're going to get into, uh, we're going to get the meatloaf going first um, since that's going to take some time to bake. Um, and then we'll get, oh, our mashed potatoes that are going with that. Uh, some smoked Gouda cheese, some yes. fresh herbs. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. The, like a lot you, of these things are going to, yeah. 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 That's why I'm going to sleep. It is. And we did some things yesterday too um, to kind of spur things along. So we've got our ground beef. This is 80 30. Um, or 80, 30. That's what is 110% awesome. of beef? It is 110. Oh, wow. we, we, we like to excel yeah. here on Eat, Taste, Live Live. Um, so we've got 80, 20 ground beef. Um, that's going to go in the bowl. Well, we'll just use our hands there because go. we're going to anyway. Okay. Nothing wrong with getting a little bit dirty when you're cooking. Um, Italian sausage, you can use um, pork, turkey, whichever, um, but it's going to give this some nice flavor. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put that in there. You can use all sorts of different meats, right? Like it doesn't have to be sausage and you're just showing that. No, I've done um, ground pork and veal. Oh, okay. um, usually when I do meatballs, it's ground beef, ground pork, ground veal. Gotcha. Uh, and then like garlic, of course. And what kind of meat is in the sausage? Uh, this is a pork sausage. Right. Uh, and then we've got our bacon here. And this is about a cup <laughs> of chopped bacon. We just, you can't, you just can't go wrong with bacon ever. Um, the seasoning I like to use in here uh, is Old Bay. Um, Some people use just... Old Bay for me just gives it a little, a little bit of an extra kick. Mm, I like kicking. And then, <laughs> this is about. It's always fun, like kickball and like <laughs> pieces of paper around the house. Uh, garlic, about three cloves of garlic going in here. Hey, see now if the meat had just come out as easily. Um, I like bell peppers. I use bell peppers in a lot of things. These are just red bell, red bell. Use green bell peppers. Um, the reds have a sweetness that I just, I appreciate, mm -hmm. I like. Um, I'll go light on these. Thank you. <laughs> uh, some chopped white onion, go in there. Uh, and of course, salt. We'll do our pepper. You should have a smell uh, option on your website. Yeah? Like yeah. a scratch and stick. Cause like people can that? like write in questions and stuff like that, right? So anybody can ask questions. And I could read it to you, but you should have like a smell thing. smell vision Yeah. I don't know how you'd do it, but... If we were the ones to invent that, that would be... I'm sure they can make an app for that. There you go. Patent app. Make an app. You make like, millions. You gotta smell your phone. Yeah. You're a new media girl. Steph could do it. I'll, could I'll, I'll whip it up by smart. the end. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Are we going to share patent on that? Or oh, yeah. You, yeah. You I'll take uh, 25%. What do I get? Nothing? Done. Zero. Uh, so okay. since we're taking out the, um, the breadcrumbs and stuff, we're going to use eggs. And these are going to hold everything together very nicely. And also the way we, we package it and put it in the, uh, in the oven is also going to help with that. It was just a little too warm for me to use the 
chef jacket. jacket. So sorry for the casual attire today. It's summertime. It is. It, yeah. It's summertime and it's comfort food. And it's so comfort food. So be, put on your t-shirt. Be comfort. Yeah, be comfortable. You know I, I'm a huge cheese fiend, by the way, so prepare yourself. You prepare yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we should prepare ourselves together. We should all be a little prepared. Bit, <laughs> a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, maybe about two tablespoons going in there. Another one of my favorite things, grill a steak. You know, people kill steaks with ketchup and A1 mm. sauce. Like just straight up. Worcestershire? Just straight up Worcestershire. Yeah, just grill it and then. Why? I don't know. It's good I stuff. I think I tried it too much. Um, so this is where we get our hands dirty. Yeah. And then we just kind of. Get in there. We're just going to get in here. Roll around. So how are you guys doing? What do you got going on? Well, uh, Steph Thorpe, if I may, if I may plug <laughs> away, she's wearing her t-shirt. Look at her t-shirt. Elf Quest. Let me see if Woo-hoo. I can get up without knocking everything over. If you guys know uh, Elf, Elf Quest <laughs> 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 that couldn't have been more, it couldn't be a more lascivious way to show that. <laughs> Uh, you're doing ElfQuest stuff. I am. Um, ElfQuest is um, a 35-year-old comic book series. Uh, it's celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. It's been around since 1978. Um, and it's about elves on a different world going on a quest, much like the title. <laughs> Good name. Good name. Um, so we'll see how that all came it, together. Exactly. <laughs> um, my producing partner and I, Paula Rhodes, um, were big fans of it as little girls. And uh, about two years ago... I uh, was back home in Vancouver, and I posted, uh, I was going through all my old comic books, and I posted a panel of it on my Twitter feed, and was like, ElfQuest anyone? And my Twitter feed blew up with all these fans, um, and it was a sort of solitary fan love for me. I didn't know there were all these other people out there, and uh, long story short, Paul and I decided to make a (laughs) fan fiction short. The, yeah, the trailer is awesome. Yeah, trailer. Um, live action, we took 12 scantily clad girls into the woods, including Taryn Southern, who I was oh. a guest on your show. Oh, yeah, she was in there. Yeah. I got that. And, uh, um, and so, needless to say, uh, 12 sta- scantily clad girls in the woods uh, made for some good hits on me <laughs> when we released it on the web. Um, and, uh, and really, at that point, you can go Elf Quest or... Yes. Right. You can watch with the volume on or off. On or off. <laughs> and uh, um, Sag New Media threw us a red carpet premiere, which was very nice of them to do. And uh, we then fast forward a year and a half later, the rights uh, were over at Warner Brothers. Um, and then it, with everything they were doing with The Hobbit, uh, they let it lapse. And so we pitched the creators um, our vision of why we think there hasn't been a movie, et cetera, yet. And uh, despite having offers from other studios, we now hold the option to the film and TV rights. Look at that. Well, Hobbit. excellent. Elf Quest. Yeah. Paula so, Rhodes is actually here right now. She's, she's sitting here. She's so five we're tall, really so you can't sure. see her. She's like, um, oh. oh, you're making a little... Yeah. We're making a little thing here. So oh, I took the, um, took the meatloaf mix. We just kind of dumped it out onto some foil here. Doesn't need to be pre-buttered, pre-greased or anything like that. There's, you know, you got pork and bacon in here. And it's and just kind of kind of cooking its own little... little I'd eat that like that. I would eat stuff. that right now. And that's you know, if I put it in there really well too, yeah, the bread, if, and it's just doing its thing. If I were to put a raw egg on top, Joel, there's your. It's kind of like a steak tartare. A little, really? Could you eat that? Which, yeah, you know. I mean, you could. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on if you want to go for that weight loss program or not. You know. <laughs> oh right, With the weight the, loss program we talked about earlier. Well, actually, the really the only thing I'd worry about in there would be the uh, the the pork sausage. Bacon is cured, so you can actually eat meat right out of the if you can tolerate the. Really? See? My mom does that. Oh, it's you, so funny. The, the Canadians. I when guess. I was a little girl, I used to sneak down and eat raw bacon. So, oh. so here's food cam. We just kind of rolled up the uh, meatloaf in the foil there, um, twisted the ends together, fold them up so it doesn't leak too bad. This is going to go right into our oven. The oven is preheated at 400 degrees. This is going to cook for about 20 to 25 minutes, um, and it really does vary from oven to oven. You know, some people's ovens are like. And, and elevation too, right? And ele- <laughs> is it? No, I'm serious. I read that somewhere. If you're up, if you yes. like at a higher elevation yes. versus uh, sea level, it would. Yes, it will affect. Thank it's you. more so, more so Thank for baking, you. more so for baking, <laughs> like cakes and pastries and things like that. Um, right, but the idea is the oven's very by elevation. That's still that was my theory. That was my it's, proposed. So that was it's really good. easy, and that's going in for 25 minutes. That's going in for like, 25 so minutes. So someone who's like fairly competent in the kitchen could do that. Yeah, like, like, like it'd be me. done, like you'd have, like myself. <laughs> You're competent, aren't you? In the kitchen? You? Really? Mm. I figured. No. We are going to get our um, potatoes going, too. <laughs> so at home, we've got some red skins. 
Um, you want to make sure when you're going to do mashed potatoes that they're cut um, about the same size. You know, all potatoes are different, but if you can get them about the same size, that will um, make the cooking time a little more even, and you won't get some that are like super mushy and some that are still raw right. and all of that. So Where's the elevation? We're going to get these going in the uh, water there. So those are boiling. Next, we talked about doing grilled cheese. We mm. talked about doing um, <laughs> soup yes. with the grilled cheese. So, tomato soup. You guys, literally, this is a five-minute recipe. Okay, I'll watch this one closely. Pot. Okay. This will be one of the only times you ever see me use canned tomatoes. Okay. You want to get a good one. San Marzano tomatoes, uh, which is what we're using, um, are probably the best. You can get them whole. You can get them diced. Um, I also like using Stanislaw tomatoes. Um, they're actually made, made grown here in uh, California. So we support. Good. Uh, so this is about um, 28 ounces mm -hmm. of tomatoes. These are going to go in your pot. And that's the juice and everything in the can. That's the juice and you everything. open it and dump it in. Open okay. and dump. Uh, one cup of vegetable stock. Okay. That also just goes right in. Um, a little bit of salt. Season everything. Some cracked pepper. Yeah, crack that pepper. <laughs> oh, I'm a gunner. <laughs> oh, you is a doing. This is what we're doing. And then a little more Old Bay. There's a theme going here. You're an Old Bay fan, yeah. You know, it, it is one of my... Uh, it's just like a general seasoning, right? Like, it's just like mm -hmm. seasoning. There's no... Yeah, there, well, there's like celery salt and paprika and right, but it's onion like a salt. Mix, and, kind of a... and a little bit of our fresh herb mix. Mm -hmm. um, you can put whatever herbs you like in here. We do the, this fresh herb mix, which is like rosemary and thyme and basil and everything. And I just kind of, you know, fresh herbs and mix it up and I use it on a lot. Uh, so after you have all this in, you're going to take a little hand so mixer like so. That's where, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where it goes you, all over me. You can do this in a blender, a food processor. As long um, as it's Cuisinart. As long as it's... <laughs> <laughs> that was me pushing Cuisinart for you. So you're going to puree this. I still like chunks, so I don't puree it all the way down. Okay. I like having some, having a bite to it. Right, right. I'm to finish up while you're doing that. Where can we find the ElfQuest short you oh, did? Oh, oh. You can find it at ElfQuestFanTrailer.com. ElfQuestFanTrailer.com. Yes, if you want to check that out. Um, and uh, and now Paul and I are uh, taking some really exciting meetings. I'm going to go over here. Doing stuff with that. Good. I want to be a scantily dressed elf. <laughs> you could be. The men are very scantily dressed, too. And so we'll need that. Really? You're a little tall, but we can. Can I have covers, at least, here? <laughs> no. No? Okay. No. What, what about what you're doing? Tell us about all your projects. I'm know. gonna very quickly you go do your interrupt thing. you. Uh, we're gonna put about a, a half cup of cream in here. Oh, interesting. I like a creamy tomato soup. I'm continuing to puree this. You can see the nice herbs in there and everything. I think that is going to be good to go on the stove. Very nice. I'll we'll get the tomato chunks off of there. That looks good. That looks really good. Now, that, if you it? wanted to do something a little more low fat, could you substitute the heavy cream with something else, or um, does it just get too watery? No, you can. You don't even have to use the cream. It's a personal preference. Um, you could just do straight up, um, just the straight up tomatoes and the broth. Um, do you I've like done milk or anything else, or no? It had to be cream. Uh, cream's going to hold together a little bit more, okay. a little bit, a little bit better than the milk. Mm -hmm. um, and you could even go if you wanted to use like a light sour cream, if you're trying to you know, oh, okay. avoid any extra um, calories or anything. Cottage cheese. Sure, I mean <laughs> you have to eat it. So I put cottage cheese in my soup. It's good. Yeah, I like cottage cheese. See. So we're gonna any kind of cheese, I'm like all over. So we're gonna put that tomato soup right back here on the on the burner, and just get that heating up slowly. And yeah, now you can do other soups too. You don't um, like I do a broccoli or asparagus soup, mm. um, and a lot of people get really kind of oh soup. We got to make stock. We have to use chicken stock. We have to use chicken broth. 
Um, the broccoli and asparagus soup that I'll do, uh, cook the vegetables, mm -hmm. um, strain them but save the water, huh? add the vegetables to a blender or food processor, add a little bit of the cooking water back, and then puree it. And then you just season it with salt and pepper. So using the cooking water, the vegetable, salt, pepper, four ingredients. And it. It'll give you, yeah, and it'll be the boldest soup um, that, you, that you've ever had. I mean, you will taste nothing but the vegetable. Um, then you can do like some sliced cheese or croutons with it or, you know, anything. Gluten-free so. croutons. Are there gluten-free yes. croutons? Well, yeah, there's, yeah. I guess sure. so. If it's made, depends on what bread you make it out of, right? That's right. We can make gluten-free bread. So, I'm going to drink some know. Hawaii water. <laughs> Hawaii. Straight from the, straight from the spring. Yes. Straight of the from, Big Island. Straight from Wakake. I'm going to get our stuff same. together here for these sandwiches. I guess that on a web show, it's called uh, The Ladies and the Gents. Mm. It's pretty good. You should see we, it. We should talk about that. Because um, uh -huh. you produced it. I did. Um, <laughs> I did. I made that show. Um, the Ladies and the Gents, which you can find at theladiesandthegents.com. Uh, it takes place in a bathroom. It takes place in a bathroom. One night, one club, two bathrooms. And so 20 <laughs> episodes happen in the ladies' room, and 20 episodes happen in the men's room. And Joel is in... A, I'm in uh, the men's bunch. room. The men's room. The men's room. Yeah. Well, see, that's shocking. I know. It's I know. Kind of like... it, was a, it was a stretch. <laughs> um, and uh, we're releasing Ladies and Gents episodes over the next 20 weeks. We're into, this starts week five, so I guess 15 more weeks. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Ladies on Tuesday, gents on Thursday, and uh, it's a lot of fun. They're short little comedy sketches all under four minutes or so. Nice. They're super fun. And they're fun. Nice. They're yeah. super fun. Um, oh, jeez. So to kind of save time today, because there's a lot going on, um, we made a couple things ahead of time. And for you guys at home, the recipes are on the website. Uh, we'll have some videos up by Monday on how to make these. Um, these are balsamic onions. Um, just white onions uh, cooked down with uh, garlic, fresh herbs, uh, salt, pepper, uh, and some balsamic vinegar to kind of caramelize them. These, uh, you can serve it as a chilled uh, relish, uh, you can serve it hot. Um, these, if I'm ever doing like any kind of barbecue or grilling, um, these just get put right on, you know, ketchup, mustard, and your other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you just throw these balsamic onions on there and they go great on a dog, you know, bratwurst, not a pet. Like a real dog? Mm. They go good on the real dog, but, yeah, he, but gets, you he gets angry. Yeah. Yeah. After a while, it's not um, We also did roasted tomatoes. These are also mm -hmm. super easy. Throw them in the oven at like 400. Um, just slice some Roma tomatoes. This video and recipe are also on the website. The video will be up on Monday. Um, slice them, put them on a sheet pan. Uh, olive oil, fresh herbs, garlic, oven. Until they, um, until they just start to get um, a little charred... Yeah. Actually, you guys have a fork here if you want to taste can one we just of those. Jump in there? Yeah, would, can absolutely. You, can you put those on a cat? Uh, these sense. actually go better on guinea pigs. Oh, interesting. Well, that's be oh, beautiful, beautiful tomato. Um, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. I don't want to. Do that, that. That's okay. Just leave the bowl. <laughs> leave leave the, the bowl in there. There you go. That's really good. Um, so these again can go on anything: salad, sandwiches. Oh, that's um, great. There's your roasted that's tomatoes good there at the food cam. Uh, and then the last thing that we're also going to be using on these grilled cheeses uh, is a pepperonata. Um, you can do this with mixed peppers. You can do this uh, with just one. Again, I went with the red because, I, you know, Bias. I find my comfort zone and that's where it, it's not true. I would never make it. We'd be making like stir fry every day if I stuck with that. <laughs> um, for so your Asian roots. For the food cam here, this is your pepperonata. Uh, julienne red bell peppers, fresh herbs, garlic, uh, and also finish with just a little touch of balsamic but a little bit of raw sugar as well to give it more of a sweetness as, in, as opposed to a um, acidity, a right. acid taste. Um, and these on cheeseburgers and anything are just great. An omelet, it's beautiful stuff. So now we're going to make some serious grilled cheeses. Are we ready for these? Yeah, we're not screwing around anymore. Well, we are like the meatloaf, that was all around. fun and games, but now this, let's focus. Now we're, now we're going. Now we are cooking. <laughs> If you will. Uh, so did you know that um, someone who loves cheese is called a turophile? A turophile. Wait a second. Are we learning something here? We, are, <laughs> not, we are being educational now. Not a quesophile. No, a turophile. Not a rotophile? Yes. Why is that just an in Canada thing? Or is no, that no, no. Kinda, if, okay. if you look it up, like, 
in, if you go through like the phobia lips, like uh-huh. agoraphobia, etc. Um, there's also a files, like bibliophiles, and, like, right. loves so, books. Turo okay. file is something who loves Just a little bit of olive oil I on your bread. Instead of butter. file is someone who loves the Rex. <laughs> Files. X Files. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. A xenophile is someone who loves aliens. That's true. And a xenophobe is someone who's afraid of them. And xena. We're not afraid of cheddar. Are square. we? Cheddar's okay. Yes. Sharp cheddar. Oh okay. please. Oh, very. Yeah. Sharper the better. Uh, so instead of uh, butter, I used olive oil on the bread. Oh, interesting. That's a healthy choice, or is it a flavor choice, or both? Yes. Gotcha. Health and flavor. Oh, very nice. Um, so I've got the pan heating up back there, so it's nice and hot when the sandwich goes in. So. On the cheddar one, we're going to take these roasted tomatoes that you guys just tried. It's kind of a play on, you know, a grilled cheese and, uh, and tomato soup. Tomato soup? Mm-hmm. And then with the tomato soup In the pan, well. do you put anything, or do you just use the oil on the outside of the bread to cook it? Uh, I do have a little bit of uh, olive oil going back there. Okay. But not enough to where you're going to fry it. Right. Give our soup a is stir. Is a word for cheese? I'm not sure what the etymology is of that. Well, you can't bring up that. Well, I'm just saying that's, <laughs> that is technically what it's called. Here's okay. your fun and, education and fact, but I don't know And someone who sells why. cheese is called a cheesemonger. Yes. I think most people know that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Remember as a fishmonger last week? Yeah, yeah he, he did. He's next to the... Monger is the way to... He's next to the cheese guy. <laughs> In our medieval bazaar. <laughs> but I was very thrilled to learn that there was a word to say... To describe you. Me. To say, me. I love cheese. They made it for me. Yeah. I love cheese. Because I love cheese. You love cheese. We're also so going to cheese put parties. I do. I have a yearly cheese party. Roasted pepper. That sounds fun. Uh, yeah. My but, house smelled like cheese for two weeks after. What if we did a cheese and bacon party, like in yeah. one? Yeah. That'd be Done. too much fun. <laughs> and we got the peppers going on there. Throwing some foam. It'd be crazy. The next cheese party I throw, though, how, however, I think, and I could invite you to do this, mm-hmm. I need to have a series of judges. Because last Ooh. year... I was the judge, and there were about a hundred people that came over, and I set it up that everyone needs to arrive with a piece of cheese and a bottle of wine. So you ate a hundred people's pieces of cheese, and I was kind of sick. Yeah, that's a lot of cheese. So. <laughs> and people were like bringing unpasteurized cheese, and someone talked in the back of a cheesemonger shop to get like the illegal cheese that wasn't oh, quite wow. at the pasteurized date. So yeah, I need I need a team of judges to poison. I'll people. do it. So here's our next. <laughs> here's our next. Uh, Sandwich. Stay. We're not getting anything over this week. Um, next sandwich, as I, I like to call the the Tuscan. So these are two different kinds of grilled cheese. Two different kinds of grilled cheese. This one has provolone. Uh, smoked or just provolone? Just regular provolone. Okay. That's going to go on there. And then we got some beautiful food cam. Got some beautiful Capicola ham here. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. I love Capicola. It's just got that nice, uh, it's got a nice kick to it. The Capicola ham, it's Capicola because it's flavor, right? Because of the spices and the stuff spices. that it's cured with. Oh, now, oh. here, we've got some beautiful prosciutto. Oh, well, I like how you say that. That makes it sound like real. Yeah. See? It's so thin. And you, now, you know the story behind prosciutto, right? I don't. Well, I've heard some things on TMZ. This is made in... <laughs> oh, that Brittany. There she goes again. Um, I found another story about prosciutto. Share so, a story about prosciutto. Uh, the pigs are raised in Parma, and they're fed um, the whey from making Parmesan cheese, and the whey is the water that comes out of the cheese-making process. Um, so it's them feeding on the uh, on the cheese. I hear soup so lobbing away. So that's why it's so good, because they're like... Oh, because they're, they're, they're flavored. They're cheese-fed the, yeah. pigs. Ex- they are. Wow. They are. Um, if you've ever... Have you just, like, tasted straight-up Parmesan or um, prosciutto, Joel? I don't think so. Maybe. I mean, okay. store-bought. You know what I mean? Like... Well... I mean, I've eaten prosciutto before. That particularly good. Right. Well, let's see here. There's a question uh, uh, from online. Because okay. there's a bunch of chat rooms. Uh, so I'll be your go-between. Where can we find the videos for these recipes? Uh, the videos for the recipes for the onions and the red peppers and tomatoes will be online Monday. Um, they're, Eat, st- they're still being edited. EatTasteLive.com. Eat taste, yes. Yep. EatTasteLive.com. And th- there's a, a part there for um, recipes and stuff. Go ahead and just like oh, tear, a tear a little piece off of there. Okay. Um, can I take and, it all and Stephanie can't get in? <laughs> that's up to you. There, You're I guess. driving her Not back. Right. So. <laughs> um, awesome. Awesome. It's a very, very tender meat. Um, oh, it's got really a sweetness good. to it. it. It's it's almost like a... 
It's a cheesy ham. Yeah. Um, it's almost like pre flavored. That's good because usually it looks like it looks fattier than most slices these. you would see. So you'd think there'd be like a, a chewy problem to it. But that was good. Right. It was like, really good. Was very, it just kind of dissolves. It dissolves. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it wasn't salty either. Like right. the times that I've had it on like a, a meat board at mm-hmm. a restaurant, I find that it's always quite salty. Is yes. that a, like a lower quality of um, or It could be a different brand. Kind. There's um, there's what a Spanish version. Purpose, maybe. maybe? Yeah, because that was like a nice flavor. It actually had flavor it's versus delicate. most prosciutto, like you said, is like salty. salty. They have, you have to pair it with something, otherwise you can't just eat by itself. And we'll throw some more cheese on here. So, uh, another question from online, if you don't mind me jumping in. Go ahead. Uh, does it matter what kind of olive oil you use? Oh. Ooh, good one. Good um, one. That's a good question. Good this one, one I would I'm probably fine. just I would just stick with the uh, with the extra virgin. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, listen. Yeah, you don't want like a, an olive oil that gets around. <laughs> like to know where it's been right this I mean, is nowhere you know this is <laughs> right. this is this is true you like to know where your olive oil is coming from so extra virgin olive oil extra virgin olive oil uh for these is good speaking of which where did i leave that but there's tons of different olive oils yes absolutely i think um, we cover this every week and every week i forget you know what but not a, not everyone's here every week and able to join us so That's it's true. okay um there is there's there's high pomace there's extra virgin um Extra, extra virgin if you're just doing like salads or little things you're just going to like eat right away. Uh, it's lighter. Uh, the high pomace has stuff in it. It's, it. There's more impurities in it. So it stands up to the high heat a lot longer. So if I'm sauteing something, I'm going to use the pomace. If I'm just eating like on a salad, I'm going to use the extra virgin. I wouldn't think of having more than one bottle of olive oil in the house. I would just have one bottle and be like, okay, I need oil on this. Well, that's that's why you're the actor and I'm holding the spatula, I guess. I, I have <laughs> pan cooking spray. That's the same thing, right? I think no. Get the, that's what I have as well. Get the one with... Um, I ran out of room in my pan, but we're good. You can put everything back together. Um, they, do make a, um, they do make a spray olive oil, but there is going to be other things in there, propellants and stuff like that. Like if you're if you're gonna buy it, just just just, just buy it. Yeah. Quit screwing around. Yeah. What kind of bread is that? Did you go over the bread already? Uh, this is a brown rice bread. Um, it's it, it's called a multigrain. There's flaxseed in there, uh, tapioca. Um, I'm sorry, I thought you said tapioca, tapioca flour. Yeah, tapioca flour. Really? Uh, potato starch, uh, brown rice flour. Um, it's a multigrain bread made by uh, Kinnikinick, uh, which is one of the food manufacturers out there. Um, for gluten-free products, they make pretty pretty solid stuff. It looks solid. Uh, I'm noticing that you like really stuff your grilled cheese sandwiches. That's I'm, a lot. Of, that's a lot I'm, of sandwich. I'm really happy about this. I'm used to like one slice me. of cheese, yeah. and, like two pieces of white bread, but, and be like, Eat right. that and shut <laughs> these up. are hearty sandwiches. Yeah, that's like a real sandwich. These are. Ooh, and look, they get all melty down. Too. And that was fast. That was really fast. Is it already done? Apparently. Yeah. That one is. Wow. Those will finish up momentarily. That's how you stuff the sandwich. Mm-hmm. We're going to get this extra cheese out of the way. I would just put that right back on the bread. <laughs> That's just me being green. You know, if it was me cooking, for me. <laughs> Camera's I don't on. even know if it would make it to the bread. I think it might just, you know. Just lick the board? It's here. Is that a booze board? This, this is a booze <laughs> board, of course. <laughs> trying to... Trying to I'll give you something to give you guys my voice. Joel, you're always good for selling out. So, <laughs> I was going to say branding, but you know, if you want to, you want to phrase it as let's, selling let's, out. Let's sure. call it what it is. Oh yeah, those are. It'd be good. different if they they were terrible products, though. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, this is very true. Soup. That was maybe more subtle about selling out. So before I give this to you guys, mm. I'm going to. Do we have to say grace? If you want to. <laughs> Grace. Let's not bring religion into this. <laughs> a little more salt. We'll do two. And we got the pepper standing by here. And you're going to see that this is just super light, full of just tomato. Food cam, here you go. Don't worry, I'm not filling these bowls up. I'm not trying to kill you guys today. <laughs> I have to leave room for the grilled cheese. 
I know. And you got the right meatloaf here. Oh my still goodness. cooking. Yeah. Yes, yeah. don't forget the meatloaf. And then the turkey and then the, the cake. And, <laughs> and the mashed potatoes. The, mashed the stuffing. Oh, yeah, the mashed potatoes. Well, don't worry. I'm not going to fill you guys up with any kind of vegetables today. Well, tomatoes. You know fruit? what's funny? Oh, is touche. Good job. Are they? Indeed. So are good avocados. Good job. Do you know avocados are fruit? Fruit, because they have the, the pit seed. Yeah. Thing. Who knew that? Hmm. Who knew? I'm used to doing this with a big flat top grill, so trying to squeeze two sandwiches into a little pan is a More bit of a bit of a physical challenge. So, do these sandwiches have uh, fancy names? Uh, this for, this first one I call it the Heartland. I don't know, it just kind of makes me think of the middle of the country. It's you know hearty and robust. And then the other one is um, our Tuscan grilled cheese. What? Because uh, of the prosciutto and the capicola and stuff like that. Um, so. You are you, you want some of them? Okay. Tell them so, about the you guys are talking about the blue cheese before you started filming. This yeah. is not like this is like a healthy blue cheese or is gluten free? What were you um, there was a concern with um, celiac disease um, that the mold cultures used in the blue cheese uh -huh. um, weren't gluten free mm. um, because traditionally a lot of times that mold was harvested from um, bread. A lot of the companies have started using different mold cultures for their cheese. Uh, Stella is one of them. I've been using Stella for years, um, and they're they're safe. They're they're good to go. So that's why we use them. Ooh. So hey. here's that, Joel. I'm gonna that steal was, yours for a minute. Food cam. You. Here's your tomato soup with the gorgonzola Jeez. cheese. It looks delicious. It smells delicious too. Now, when you guys get started on that, do you want us to dip in, or do we dip our sandwich in there? What's uh, if you want to wait for the sandwich? sandwich in it, but I like, like to taste it first. It. Yes, yes. You are more than welcome. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good tomato soup. Should be nice and light. It is. It tastes very much like you would expect it to, but it doesn't look like it. You know what I mean? Mm. Presentation-wise, it's so nice, fancy looking, but it is very. It's very like childhood. Why, thank you. Like I want to watch Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> we can. I think they're on right now. Mm. At least for us on the West Coast. East Coast. This is delicious. They don't have Saturday morning cartoons anymore. That's a, They don't? No. There's cartoons that all, on all the networks all the time. Like there's Cartoon Network. You know what I mean? They don't have... There are channels full of cartoons. Right. It used to be like three hours on a Saturday morning was the time. I used right. to get up so early on a Saturday, mm -hmm. make pancake batter, and then just eat it raw. And they've oh. wrecked bacon. <laughs> and they <laughs> when you cook the pancakes, just use Surprised you have anyway. allergies at all. <laughs> I know it's great. And I haven't it's watched them recently. Dragons cartoons. But oh, I hear no, they've yeah. wrecked uh, Looney Tunes. Yeah, oh. like Bugs Bunny's in a mansion now. You know what? Bugs Bunny and uh, Daffy Duck are now roommates, mm -hmm. and they tried to update it and make it like a sitcom. The reason why I watch it is I love Looney Tunes from way back when, and I yes. was like, oh, let's see what kind of guest stars they have. And the first season was great because you'd random people would pop up. You're like, oh, get out. Pepper the Pew's a wedding coordinator. Like, it was kind of funny. <laughs> so they, like, really updated it. They really, I mean, yeah, they really updated it. And now it's just, like, now it's become so, like, sitcom. And you're just like, this isn't what I want to watch it for. It's like. Right. You want to watch it for the unintended racial slurs of the era and everything else. <laughs> exactly. And the violence. Exactly. Like, back when cartoons could be violent, still, no one I was still getting. watch it. It's still good. But. So we've got here our, let's go with this one. Will you DVR it and then watch it? So you, here we go, DVR. food cam. Up here we've got our, heart, our uh, Heartland. Uh, grilled cheese with the roasted tomatoes, the pepperonata, the cheddar, and then back here we've got our Tuscan grilled cheese with the balsamic uh, onions, provolone cheese, capicola, and uh, what's the other thing I used? Prosciutto. Prosciutto. So there we go. And now we're going to make sure we get you the right one. You know what's good when you get a little bit of that blue cheese oh, and yeah. with that soup? Like it's. Oh, uh, my goodness. Look at this. And here you go. Mmm. I wish you'd made more sandwiches. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like a pile of sandwiches. I, I need to take a picture of this. Take a picture. Feel it's free. It's beautiful. I shall tweet it out. I like to I like to remember. We are tweeting away. So this is the Heartland sandwich, yeah? That is the Heartland. Okay. I'm going to get set up here to do our potatoes. Oh, flash. The, why is the flash on? That's unfortunate. Oh my gosh. You're wasting time taking pictures. No, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm building anticipation is what I'm doing. Mm. Oh, that bread's awesome. Yeah, you know, the, the thing... so, like, hearty. It's such a good... The thing with um, the gluten-free breads uh, that I've found, and they're starting to come out with some better ones. Mm -hmm. um, and by better, I don't mean quality. I mean, in terms of 
The thing you'll find with gluten-free breads is when they're not grilled, mm -hmm. they're very kind of just gritty and stiff. They're not like right. a real, mm -hmm. you know, you sandwich all the seeds bread. and everything in it, right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, right. But once you grill them, then it's just like mm -hmm. a whole different... Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you want to cry? Are you having a moment? <laughs> this is really, really good. Thank you. Here's the thing about like gluten-free stuff and health food. I think mm -hmm. it gets such a bad rep. And you're doing a good thing here with the show because... You know what I mean? Whenever you think of, I mean, maybe less in Los Angeles. Going in for the dip. But like growing up in New Mexico, like a health food store, you're like, everything's going to taste like crap in a health food yeah. store. Or when you say like, oh, gluten-free or wheat-free or lactose-free or stuff, it always used to have a bad connotation. Like this is nice because it's turning it around saying like, look, there's actually mm -hmm. good stuff out there, good recipes. And, and you can probably else. find a lot of this stuff online now too, right? Right. Like At eTasteLive.com. Mm. <laughs> we are a resource. <laughs> I plug the, the show we're actually on. And so you really stuff <laughs> these grilled cheese, yet when they cook, yeah. they... Yeah, they come yeah. down. Then, you know, that's a lot of things like, you know, the ones that mom used to make. No offense, mom. Huh? Uh, you know, two slices of cheese and it comes out and it's, you know, like a pancake. Right. Um, this, I mean, you want to... It looked like you were putting like a block of cheese in there. Like when it came out, I was like, okay, this is going to be good for one bite and then be too much cheese. It's about it four ounces uh, of cheese per sandwich. Um, but, you know, feel free. You want to go eat it? You want to put a half block on there? Go for it. Uh, oh. So we've got our red skins here, food cam. Coming off the stove. These are nice and tender. You can squeeze them. We have a question from online that I should have asked before I was eating. Okay. Excellent. Will the soup be ruined if you let the tomatoes stew too long? Uh, because you're pureeing it, no. Uh, you'll get a smoother consistency though. They'll break down a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll get a you'll, yeah. You'll definitely get that smoother consistency. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the ones like the San Marzanos and stuff, when you get them uh, in a can like that, are already stewed. Uh, so I mean, it, it with everything like. I cook to my taste and my palate. Um, so like if you, you want lose a more flavor necessarily, you'll just lose consistency. Right. You will not lose any flavor. Gotcha. It's all it's all staying right there in the pot. Might I say this is an exceptional grilled cheese? Why? Thank you. It was very you good. You might say. It. I might say. Wow. It. I'm gonna try the so, Tuscan now. Have you done? The I should no, go to I, the I, Invitational I'm, I'm next going, year. Exactly. You should compete in the Grilled Cheese <laughs> Invitational. I was there um, end of uh, uh, April this year. I was one of many many judges, and uh, so I sampled about. 50 different grilled cheese sandwiches. Wow. Uh, wow. I was there with a group of friends, so eat, you, get a, you get a quarter, and we cut the quarters into little pieces. I should hope so, because that's, you know, that's a lot of cheese. cheese that would bread. be fun, but deadly for our director. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you make 20 sandwiches, and you can compete in two different, uh, three different heats. One is bread butter cheese, so traditional, and then one they call the Kama Sutra, which would be these, where you can, as long as it's cheese and bread, you can put other stuff in it, so that's mix good. it up. And then there's a honey pot, so a dessert grilled cheese. Nice. Oh. Yes. And that, that would be fun. These are better than almost all of them. This is fantastic. The Tuscan. Wow. Mm -hmm. Tuscan oh, I'm, 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 oh. I need to finish this, and I have to get on that. Well, thank you. But you should compete next year with this. This is a great mix. I love the flavor on this. With the uh, with the balsamic mm. onions and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you definitely taste it. Like it's got a nice, a little bit of a tartness to it, but it's like offset by the cheese. Like it's excellent. That's what we. Enjoy. We do. You'll see, uh, especially with this meatloaf dish that's coming up, um, I like to balance sweet and savory on a lot of plates. That's what it is, yeah. Um, you know, some people just go all savory. Some people go more sweet. I like to get layers of, of uh, mm -hmm. flavor in there. All right, so we got our mixing bowl. We've got our red skins. Everything's going in hot. Uh, so we got these in there. We've got, uh, it's about a tablespoon of chopped garlic um, going in there. Just jump in there. Mm -hmm. About two tablespoons of butter. Right. Can't oh, go wrong with butter. Right. I'm just going to let you guys eat. Yeah. <laughs> Do whatever you're doing. We're good over here. Uh, now I don't know which one I like better. We've got uh, we've got some cream here. I'm going to do probably about half of that cream. That was a cup. We're going to go with half a cup. That'll be good. Now here mm -hmm. we've got eight mm -hmm. ounces of, uh, of smoked Gouda cheese. Mm -hmm. Going in the mashed potatoes. Oh, and the great thing with mashed potatoes, you do them hot, just put everything in there. And then we're going to whip it, and then it's going to be... Are you going to whip it good? We are going to whip it <laughs> real good. Just checking. <laughs> Excellent. I love that when we have, like, interaction <laughs> and stuff. You know, it's just and it's stuff. just fun. It's way better than me just standing here cooking by myself. 
Cause, yeah, because then you, you'd be talking out loud, and people would be like, what are you doing talking to Which loud, I do. Talking? Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> so this second sandwich is fantastic. Thank you. And now I don't know which one I like better. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to take these over to the mixer and mixer. whip these. So we got our paddle on there. Um, I find mm. that the paddle attachment works way better than a whisk attachment or a hook. The hook you pretty much only use for dough. Um, so we're going to lock that in place. We're going to start down here. And I really wish Yum. you could smell the garlic and the uh, gouda coming together here. You just layer it up. Uh, whenever you're using a mixer, start out slow and then increase the speed. Don't start at like eight and, you know. Just I've, I've done, I do that all the time, yeah. All, all over the place. That's fun though, isn't it? Not to clean that, up, it isn't. Right. And this bread is fantastic. I know, right? Like, I, I, it's so hardy. I wouldn't have thought it was gluten-free at all. It tastes like real bread. Uh, tell us the name of this bread again. Uh, that is <laughs> that, that, that is uh, the Kinnikinnik. Ah, Kinnikinnik uh, brown rice uh, multigrain bread. Um, and, you know, the other thing that celiacs have to face, too, when they go on a wheat-free, gluten-free diet, is you're going to notice that your loaf of bread goes from $1.29... Two dollars in a in a bakery to seven dollars a loaf. Mm. Yeah, and it's just one of those things. I mean, granted, the ingredients are a little more um, expensive and things like that for the manufacturers, but right. it, there's a definite. Um, it's a specialty item still. Right. 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 Is it? Can you find like bread like that, like something really special, like something that's t usually wheat based? Can you find it like a gluten free everywhere? Is it? Uh, a lot of the main, or just uh, the fancy a lot of the main chains are starting to carry it. Right. Um, we just got this from a local grocer. It's in their freezer. Um, they're starting to like label their shelves what items are gluten free. Mm -hmm. um, the food industry is starting to really become more aware of this. Mm -hmm. um, I opened my restaurant in Detroit in two thousand five, uh, four, five. It was a long, it was a while ago. Um, and it was just kind of starting to become a little more prevalent. Um, but the last two years, uh, gluten-free is number two in the top 10 food trends um, from Eating Well magazine. Um, quinoa this year for 2013, quinoa is the number one food trend, oh, okay. um, which we cook with a lot on this show. Right. Um, and then um, gluten-free was number two. So there's money to be made off it, so they're going to make more products. Um, you know, there, there, there is some, there, there is a little bit of, um, some people are on a gluten-free diet because they need to be like celiacs, um, people with, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, things like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of times, you know, celiac is misdiagnosed as irritable bowel syndrome, um, you know, because then they can give you medications and do this. Uh, celiac, it's more of a adopt your diet, gotcha. uh, and you'll feel better. Um, and that's what happened with me, like yeah. cutting out gluten made it big difference not because i had any allergy to it per se but it just do you did. still get your carbs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah with your rice your pastas um yeah. your quinoas and things like that one thing i'm going to do that um this has carbs in it still i'm going to use to enhance our meatloaf a little bit we're going to yeah. let those potatoes just kind of rest back there that makes sense yeah. you guys remember these right the we roasted do. tomatoes that are on your sandwiches i'm eating one right now you got this at at home food cam. We're going to make a little sauce out of these to go with the meatloaf and the smoked Gouda potatoes. Um, so if you make these, save some and you can do tons of other things. So this is going to go in a little pot. Pan. Pot. Mm -hmm. Pot. And somewhere I had yep, just a little bit more veggie stock. And we're going to put this in here. Like so. And eh, a little bit more. Unlike most cooking shows, I tend to eat everything you serve me. I don't just taste it. <laughs> you don't like to save room for. Oh, I'm pacing. I know. I'm I just pacing. realized I should probably start pacing. A little bit I'm, I'm concerned because I want to eat that meat. Some salt. Mm -hmm. so, Some pepper. This might be my takeaway. Now we're going to rinse off our blender here. We've already strained our potatoes. And the soup is so good. I'm so, I know, so right? question gluten free bread in the freezer. Yes. That, it, they all live there. And why is that? Mm hmm. Um, they don't have a lot of the same preservatives or shelf life, uh -huh. um, and because of the way that they're baked and the ingredients, if they sit at room temperature, they're going to get more, um, they're, they're just not going to stay as fluffy. They just don't have the shelf life of regular bread. So when you buy a loaf, you put it in the freezer and then take up the slices that you need? Mm -hmm. And how long do they take to be Actually, ready? at room temperature, they, they thaw pretty quick. 
Um, I like to do, whenever I'm shopping and I buy like bulks of things, um, I'll break it into little, uh, little pouches. So if you get this, you know, put like two slices in a baggie and uh, um, separate it out. Yeah, separate it out. I'm going with honey. <gasps> to do so what? we've got our roasted tomatoes and the veggie stock right uh -huh. here. Uh, we're going to take this just a little bit. Magic. Okay. With a little bit of honey. I don't question a lot of what you do, but I question that. Go with me on this one. All right. Trust me. This is going to be great stuff. And we are minutes away from our meatloaf. So I'm going to puree this too, but not as much as the soup. I still want this chunky. You have a hand mixer? Uh -huh. I do. Do you have I one? Have exactly that. Really? I it's a great it. thing. I use it to scare the cats, maybe. <laughs> It's good to get cats going. You to turn it. it on, they run away. Cuisinart's famous for scaring cats. Yeah. It's more yeah. fun to chase them with the vacuum, though. Mm -hmm. If I clean. I do that. I like animals. So, I don't. But you don't clean. So, so you just. Don't take up that. You literally just yeah. scare cats with your <laughs> Cuisinart <laughs> hand mixer. Multifunctional. Yeah. Multifunctional. Good tool. Do you have that? I don't. You should. I think we have a toaster, and that's about it. <laughs> we don't have a lot in our place. Devin, uh, my wife, is a, she's afraid of. We're gonna put this on the appliances. stove and just let that heat up. I'm sure there's a word for that. A something phobe. Yeah, something phobe. And I'm sure our smartphone would tell us. It's, it's, a, it's a whirlpool phobe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me like totally make some room she here. About it. We, went with, like, we got a microwave, and she was like, no. Are you guys ready for dinner? Uh, really? Uh, yes. I mean, that. That's a heck of an appetizer course we've got going there. Yeah, that was quite this. an appetizer. I didn't know if you were expecting friends. All right, so after, well, you're, you're my friend, Joel. More, oh. more friends than that. Oh, oh thanks. Oh, my gosh. Great. I like your Han Solo outfit. Thank you. I'm dressed like Han Solo today because it's May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. It's my, it's my homage you. to Han Solo. So, uh, never reach into the oven with bare hands. I think I did that first episode. Uh-huh. What, huh. what, what episode did I do? With the corn. Yeah, oh, that was our friends and family episode. Oh, right. Was the, yeah, like, that, oh, that those was... are hot. Oh. Um, well, it's a learning So experience. when it comes out, um, it's going to stay in its nice little mold, or it's going to let that breathe a little bit. Can I ask you a quick question from online? Absolutely. Would russet potatoes or white yellow potatoes mix with the other ingredients just as well as the red? So is there a reason you chose red over those? Um, red skins are my favorite. Um, they're kind of the most versatile to mash with. Uh -huh. um, the yellows can be a little bit waxier. Um, I like to roast with those more or do slices or do um, like dauphin, uh, dauphin, wop, dauphin wop. The potatoes with like the nutmeg and the cream and the, and the cheese and, and things like that. Okay. Um, so it really kind of depends on what I'm doing with each one. Gotcha. But the rest of you like for mashing? The redskins. The redskins. I'm yes. sorry. Not, yeah, Love the redskins. The... Potato, not the football team. Right. I'm from well, I'm from Detroit, so I don't know anything about football. Hockey, though, and you're a Canadian, Canadian Vancouver, yeah. so you're, mm -hmm. okay. All She's right. all about the curling. There's gonna be a. All about it. <laughs> there's there's gonna be a all hockey quiz it. later. Yeah. Uh, so let me just taste these mashed potatoes and make sure these are. Did the hockey playoffs start yet? Yes. Did they? They're happening. They did. Because, because it's late spring, you might as well do hockey. Yep. Well. Right. Well, they, you know they've got a pretty aggressive. Um, season well, well when they you, were on yeah when you lock out when you don't play like, half yeah. of it you tend to rush things even their half season was like 50 games a team or something like that there was some interesting talk when i was up in canada reading i was reading the canadian newspapers up there right um and uh, when the lockout was happening uh there were there was a team of lawyers representing the people who were making the case that the stanley cup belongs to the people, not to the teams. And so they were going to have... Like, like the fans? Like the fans. Like oh, wow. Lord Stanley gave it to the people. Um, and so they were going to have like amateur teams play, like an intramural. Oh, and they would have been awarded the Stanley Cup if the lockout continued. So wow. here's our mashed potatoes there, food camp. That's a way to fight the lockout. These are right, the... Yeah. And then they were like, you can't do that. That's and the then there was talk about like, would it be like... Oh, the and These are the smoked yeah, gouda. I think it would have been cool. Potatoes? Yeah. Like, you know... You're doing your an intramural. It would have been interesting to watch. Yeah. We could get the these on the plate if they wanted to come off the. I was done with it. Off the. Spectrum. I kind of had to get off the hockey train living in LA because nobody cares about it. 
<laughs> but even last year when the Kings won, it was just like a, it was kind of like well, a, that everyone was, was more surprised. Yeah, I think than like yeah. yeah. No, they were really like, like, wait a second, what are we celebrating what? today? Yeah. What, what oh, happened? congratulations! And, and that was particularly like brutal on a number of levels for Vancouver because they were playing the Canucks, the right? Kings. Right. And so we had that lovely riot. <laughs> um, win, lose, or draw. Um, I think hockey you just going too fast. I'm like, really? Carolina and Nashville and Atlanta are your new venues? And yes. Tampa Bay? Like, it's just ridiculous. Well, Detroit is finally going into the Eastern Conference next year, so I'm happy about that. Oh, are they really? So they're yeah, Detroit they're in the Western too. Conference, and, you know, it's like, why? Stupid. That is some beautiful-looking rosemary there. Thank you. Um, okay, so we've got our meatloaf out of the oven here. Those potatoes are already done. Like you just threw them in the mixer and that's it. That's it. You didn't cook it or anything else. You well, we, we the... cooked them. We boiled them and then we strained them. But you didn't cook your other ingredients in it. You just threw mm. them in there. Nope. Just butter, milk, the everything. Yeah. Because the heat will melt the cheese and all that. Exactly. Stuff. Oh. Exactly. And I hear our sauce going. I back overcook here. everything. You overcook everything. Yeah. Huh. I figure you always have to just throw it back on the grill whenever you add new things in. Mm. And this is super hot. So we're just gonna kind of lay these out here. That looks so pretty. It does. See, it held together nicely. There's no, whoop, there's no bread in there. It's really hot, so I'm dropping stuff. Um, no bread crumbs, you know. Wow, and what does, your presentation. Okay. I know, that's, so even if it's not good, you just still think it's gonna be good. <laughs> good point. You, you, good you eat with your eyes first. You eat with your eyes. Um, that's kind of the rule when I'm in a restaurant too, is, if it can't be photographed, don't send it to the table. Yeah. So does so is that juice inside there? Is that good juice or is that? Because it seems like of course that's would good juice. That's hold, from the bacon and everything. And it would hold all the juice inside the meat, so it kind of cooks in its own juice. Yep. While it's in the, yep. All right. It's got a nice slow roast on there. Always taste when you're serving other people. Make them jealous. And because I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> You would think I eat. Really? Because I had 17 grilled cheeses already. <laughs> oh my so god, these are so good. <laughs> well, I hope, so I hope good. you're getting enough over there. Uh, so I this will. is, uh, for the food cam, this is the uh, sauce that we made out of the leftover roasted tomatoes. Uh, we just pureed it with a little bit of veggie stock and um, a little bit of honey, which is giving it a nice okay. thing. We're curious about this honey. Mm -hmm. so veggie stock and honey. So mm -hmm. what you're going to, and I probably picked the smallest spoon and that tomatoes. I have to do this with. And tomatoes. Yeah. Um, so what you're going to get here is you're going to get the sweetness with the, from the honey with the tomatoes going into the, um, with the herbs and everything else. And you're going to find just lots of yumminess. I love these chunks of tomatoes on here, too. I hate it when you kill stuff, you know, when everything's over. I'm not going to lie. Home. I was never a fan of uh, chunks of tomatoes. But it didn't bother me in the soup. That's good. Because it was nice. changed your mind on the, Maybe. On I might chunk. be converted. I might like chunk your tomatoes now. So, oh, look how let pretty. me do this real quick. Yeah, sell mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Sell that. Mm -hmm. This is this is the Steph Thorpe you got to sell this to. <laughs> A plus for plating, mm -hmm. presentation. All right, food cam, here we go. Here is our meatloaf with the Gouda smoked mashed potatoes. Ooh. We've got our roasted tomato sauce on there with a little bit of honey. Uh, I'm going to throw just a little bit of sprinklage on there for you. And there you go. There's your dinner. Oh, oh my goodness. We're going to swap some stuff out. And hey, we got a question from online real quick while you do this. Okay. From Lind88. <gasps> Look at that. Delicious. Hold on, this whole thing just shut down. Hold on a second, Lind. <laughs> Which smoked Gouda cheese do you prefer? I Ooh. noticed each country has a different flavor. Uh, the one I used was uh, by Boar's Head. Mm -hmm. um, they, again, kind of... They're another company that is like all of our our meats, our cheeses, all gluten free. Right. Um, I carried a lot of Boar's Heads product in my uh, restaurant back in Detroit, um, and they're just they're just a nice is that quality like a product. Country or is that is Boar's Heads a brand? But it's um, good from different countries. There is. Uh, there was one from the Netherlands uh, that's also good. It's got a nice, robust flavor to it. Right. Um, the the Boar's Head one's a little more mild. Um, but, but the not, uh, the one from yet. Netherlands is a little bit more. Uh, it's about twice the price. Laos. Laos. Yeah, is there one from Laos? Well, I think. Uh, I think they have ginger cheeses there. Lots of different Probably. dairies make different goudas. Like there are American goudas. Mm -hmm. There's a goat milk gouda. There's, there's some a, that are non-smoked. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's some that aren't so gouda. 
Oh, oh, come on, Land 88, give it up. Eat if, your dinner. <laughs> if, eat if you ever have a chance to try a five-year aged Gouda. That sounds delicious. From Holland, it is fantastic. Who that would sounds think about delicious. five years? Like, five who years. would make Gouda and be like, you know, we're going to wait gonna five and it taste it? For five years. And the see what three happens. year is more common, but the five year, it gets like really grainy and it's mm -hmm. like a sharp cheddar and it just kind of like dissolves in your mouth and it's like super hard. There is a uh, yeah. a goat cheese out there too. And I, we should have probably just put that question right to Stephanie since she's our resident Tour cheese. File. Tour yeah, of file. Exactly. Tour of file. <laughs> I just like Tour saying file. the word. <laughs> um, there's a, a, a chevre out there, a goat cheese that they roll in ash. Uh, that is so good. Oh, it's it's it's. I'm not like sold. Cypri I'm not sold. Cypress Grove. Okay, this is rosemary. Salt fog. Here's my garnish question: Eat it or put it to the side? No, that's more for looks. Gotcha. That's more of a beauty thing. I never know. Usually, I'll just bite into whatever garnish it is and see if I like it. Oh and we'll goodness. just have you guys take that's a bite of good. that. Oh, that's <laughs> you know, it's a good cooking day when you just have everything laid out. Chaos. Look how thick and hearty <laughs> these potatoes are. Like this is this is like a hearty looking potato. Mm. Mm. So you're going to taste the Italian sausage, the beef, you're going to get all those different flavors in there. And the honey on the sauce. Oh, yeah, so yeah, Have you tried the meatloaf? No, oh I my god, it's amazing. Thank you. Mm, those potatoes and you taste the bacon. Oh. And then when you get the tomato with the potato the tomato with the potatoes, there's a nice little between the sweetness and the uh, smokiness of the gouda. That'll just uh, I'm really play excited out. about the potatoes. Oh, shut up. This is so good. <laughs> I'm not even done eating. I'm going to tell you. Okay, I won't talk anymore. <laughs> um, I am going to go and say goodbye this to wasn't, This shouldn't the work people. the way you did it. No? It's I'm amazing. just saying. You want me to redo it? No, it's you want awesome. Me to? Oh, thank you. Okay, wait. Let me, let me try the potatoes before you sign off. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> going for the potatoes. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah? We're good. <laughs> You're good to go. You're good to go. Cheesy potatoes for the win. Mm. Mm -hmm. There you go, cheese tomatoes. It's this, this is like the upscale version of a grilled cheese without the bread. Yeah, this is so, cheese, your so meat, comforting. Your it's, like a deep, it's like if my mom knew how to cook and cared, she would have made this. <laughs> 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 That's just taking me back. <laughs> I'm gonna go say goodbye to our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> you guys continue to eat, and uh, I'll get back to you in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, mm -hmm. there we go. Episode four of uh, Eat, Taste, sense. Live Live. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we did our tomato soup. Uh, we did our two grilled cheeses, the heartland with the tomatoes and peppers. We did our t um, Tuscan mm -hmm. with the uh, balsamic onions, the capicola, mm -hmm. the prosciutto, and the provolone. Uh, mm -hmm. Throw fresh herbs mm -hmm. in there if you want to. And then finishing up with our three meat meatloaf with the ground beef, ground Italian sausage, the bacon, some veggies. Finished with a sweet tomato sauce, and we're eating away. Mm. I want you guys to enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy Cinco de Mayo. Be safe. We will see you next week. Uh, more great food. It's Mother's Day. You're going to want to be here. We are going to show you how to do breakfast in bed for mom, gluten-free, with some Grand Marnier French toast, some s'mores pancakes, mimosas, bellinis. We're going liquor, nuts next week. Make sure you're here. I'm Andrew Doyle. Have a great day. See you later, everybody. <laughs>